Hi everyone, uh, I came across an interesting bug in GHC today and I thought I'd share it with you and, um, and in the process show you how GHC deals with, uh, with solving equalities, um, which is a very central, very important part of its constraint solver, but actually the code is, is fairly easy to read and understand. Um, so we're going to take a look at that today. Uh, so, so it all starts with, uh, with a, a failure in this branch that I'm working on. Uh, this is merge request 4149. Um, uh, I'll put a link down in the, in, the, in the description for you. But the bug is actually a fairly simple one. Uh, so let's see, I think it was TC fail 132 that caused the problem. So it's going through all the different test possibilities. Okay, so here's the problem. So every time we make a change to GHC, we actually run through many, many tests to see if, even if a program is not meant to compile, is the error message changed? And if it is changed, then those of us working on GHC have to go through and uh, approve each change. Um, and this is, this is sometimes laborious, but a very good thing because it means that error messages, uh, well, at least they don't get any worse. Uh, right? We'd like them to be better, but, they, but we want to know if they're getting worse. And so this, this error, so the, the, this program, we don't even need to look at the program. This program has a kind error. That's the old error message, right? That's this minus sign over here saying this is the old line. And my patch has now replaced it with this. So, so this says, okay, so we've gotten some kind error confused. Uh, we've, uh, something has kind star. So int is, thing, is something like with kind star, maybe is something with kind star arrow star. So we have a kind error. But my new patch is now saying it can't match lifted rep with star. So, so what's, what's going on here? So actually, before we get, in, get any further, let me explain a little bit about why this error might happen in the first place. Um, so let me just go to an empty buffer. Um, so so the, the problem is that we're trying to unify star with star arrow star. Um, and uh, we can clearly see that this isn't going to work out. But what, what GHC does is when it's trying to deal with an equality, it tries to decompose that equality into smaller pieces. So some of you might be familiar with a feature in GHC called levity polymorphism. So levity polymorphism says that actually star is really a type synonym for type of listed rep, where type is in all caps. Um, and the idea here is that we have many different uh, ways of, of, of storing information at runtime. We can store it via a pointer that's, that's lifted. In other words, uh, lifted means that it can support undefined. It's lazy. Um, we can also have a pointer that's unlifted. Um, we can have raw ints. Uh, we can have raw doubles, things like that. So all of that would be changes in this lifted rep. Just about everything most Haskellers see is of type lifted rep, but there are a few other things out there. And so we say that star is really just a synonym for this type lifted rep. Okay, so if we, if we're starting with that, then we can look at, at this star equals star arrow star. Twiddle is GHC's notation for type equality. Um, and, and let's expand this out. So this is really type lifted rep equals this. And this we can rewrite as arrow applied to star and star. And so, of course, because applications are curried, this thing on the right really means this. And so we can decompose to lifted rep equals star. This is the argument on the left. The argument to type is lifted rep. The argument on the right to this arrow partially applied to star is star. And so we get an error, um, uh, uh, can't match lifted rep with star. So, so actually, this error, it is technically correct. That is the problem here. That is a problem here. There are other problems. Um, but it's really not very useful. Um, and so to, to see where this comes up and how to fix it, we have to go into a particular spot in GHC's constraint solver. So let's jump there. So this module is, well, we can see it up on the screen here. It is ghc.tc.solver.canonical. Uh, the idea here is that as GHC is solving constraints in, in, en route to, to figuring out the types in a program, it canonicalizes them. It takes these constraints, which may have many different forms, and then reduces them to just a few particular forms. So today, we're just going to be concerned with equality constraints. Um, and equality constraints go through a bunch of functions. We're not going to trace the whole way, but they eventually get in to the very excitingly named can eek nc prime. This does all of the work. 
Uh, Canic NC just prints out some stuff, uh, but Canic NC prime does all of the work. And it takes a bunch of arguments. Uh, and this is the function that we're going to be looking at today in this video. Um, so the first step here is the there's a bool uh, passed into Canic NC prime telling us whether or not the two types, there's always going to be two types involved, the left-hand type and the right-hand type, uh, two types involved, are they flattened? Uh, flattening is part of the constraint solver algorithm, which takes, um, uh, let's see, if we know, for example, that a equals int, flattening replaces a with int. Um, it, it goes through, it, it, it reduces type families, it um, if we know an equality, it applies those equalities. Other substitutions that we sort of have in the environment, it applies those. We're not really going to get so much into flattening, but the question is, have we sort of simplified both sides? We could think of it that way. Um, the global rooter env has a, uh, uh, it's a structure that knows everything that's in scope. Um, the only reason we need it here is because uh, when we're checking to see whether one type can be coerced into another, that depends on what new type constructors are in scope. Um, and so we, we have this, this global root around just for that purpose. Uh, we have the fam inst envs, um, this as the, uh, the global environment of all family instances. So this is needed in case we need to reduce type families. Uh, then we have the evidence uh, that, that, it, that represents uh, our constraint. Every constraint is associated with evidence. We're not so concerned with constraints, with evidence today. I don't want to get into this. Um, we have the equality relation. Um, are we doing nominal equality? That's the equality that Haskellers are all familiar with. Or representational equality, which is what coerce works with. So most of the time, we're, we're, this is going to be nominal. Then we have the left-hand type, but this is actually passed as two separate arguments. The first argument um, may have some synonyms unwrapped. The second one here will keep the synonyms as wrapped as possible. And this way, we get to report errors uh, that string doesn't match with int instead of list of car does not match with int. So as we do our analyses, we, we try to keep synonyms. Um, we, we try not to unwrap type synonyms. Uh, but sometimes we have to do it to actually be able to, to sort of look to see what the, the type is. Then we have the right-hand type, same thing. Uh, and, and then the result of this is going to be either that we're, we stop doing work or we continue with a certain constraint. OK, so the interesting thing is going to be the order of cases here, sort of what we do. So the first step is to expand synonyms. So TC view al allows us to look through one layer of synonym. If there is a synonym, we get a just response. Otherwise, we get a nothing response. So TC view is going to unwrap this tie one right here. So this is the one that's already perhaps been unwrapped. And then we recur with it one step more unwrapped. But critically, we don't change this one. Um, uh, PS is pre-synonym, right? We're not going to unwrap these synonyms. Um, and then we do the same thing for tie two. So we want to be able to look at synonyms. So that now we can start to compare structure. But if there's an error, we still have the original uh, synonym type to, to be able to report to users. Very good for, for usability. Then the next thing that we're going to do is there's this special case. In case we have simplified both sides, that's this true, and if we're doing representational equality, then we do this extra check, are the two types equal? We normally don't really need to do an equality check. You'd think that would be the, the core of this, but it's not, um, because we sort of boil it down into its, into its little pieces, and then we do the equality check. Um, uh, for for re nominal equality. And there's a note explaining why we do an eager reflexivity check, but we don't want to get, it, get too distracted by that. Um, then, if we are doing representational equality, we need to unwrap new types. Um, but unwrapping new types might also have to look through type families and data families and such. Um, again, I don't want to get too distracted by representational equality today, but that's our next step here. And why? Well, it's in note, unwrap new types first. Um, I, should, I should say, those of you who have not yet looked at the GHC source code, uh, we are littered with these notes, which I think is a fantastic documentation mechanism. So if we're in the middle of a function and there's something big and complicated to explain, instead of polluting our function with lots of comments, we just refer to a note which is out of line. Um, a, a very nice uh, uh, convention, I think. Um, OK, then the next step is to get rid of casts. Um, and, and so in... Uh, in GHC, we have types, they have kinds, right? And so that's actually the error that we initially saw, that there was a, a problem matching star with star arrow star. Um, well, we can also have 
cast. So maybe we have some type variable a and it has kind k, but maybe we also know that k equals star. So we might have a cast to change a to have type star instead of type k, uh, kind k. Um, so, but we want to just get rid of those because they obscure what's really going on with the equality. So we strip off casts here. Um, now, this, this next part is probably the part that's going to be easiest to understand. So now we start looking at things that have similar structure. So the first thing we're going to look at is, uh, does a, um, do two literals match? So this is in case you have a number or a, a, a type-level nat or type-level symbol in your type. So we handle that case. Then maybe we're comparing two function types. Um, and so if we have two function types that both have the same visibility, right? Both uh, si uh, thin arrow and fat arrow are considered function types, but we don't want to try to equate those two. So we need to always check to make sure that the arg flag, uh, which says whether it's a fat arrow or a thin arrow, are, is the same. Um, and then there's this extra step of doing this get runtime rep maybe stuff. It's a little bit distracting. There's a note to explain it if you're very curious. Um, but assuming all those checks work out, then we can say that it's a decomposable Tycon app. So this is something like if we're comparing int arrow a against bool arrow a. Right? We want to sort of decompose that into int equals bool and a equals a. Um, and so that goes into decomp a decomposable Tycon app. Uh, Tycon app is an applied type constructor. In this case, arrow. Um, so then the next thing we look at is if we have two Tycon apps. So this is something like either a, b compared to either c, d. Um, and this will end up here. Um, and we don't want to treat type families here because type families are very special. Uh, but if it's not a type family, then we can treat them in can Tycon app. Um, then we check for two for all ties uh, as long as they have the same visibility. And there's another note to explain why we have to do that check. Then now we here we check to see that there are two app ties. So an app tie within GHC is something like A applied to B. It's some, some variable A applied to B. Um, but actually A applied to B, let me write this out, um, A, B might, for some value of A and some value of B, might match maybe int, right? So we might not have an app tie against an app tie. We might have an app tie against a tie con. So this thing on the right, instead of being an app type, this is actually internally stored as a type app because it's an applied type constructor. Um, and so we want to be able to decompose this as well. TC split app type maybe is clever enough to know to be able to split maybe int into its component pieces so that we can handle them. Um, okay, let's undo that change. We don't want that comment there. Uh, okay, so at this point, we've tried all of the different things that can decompose. And so at this point, if we can't decompose, let's flatten. Let's simplify the types on either side and try again. So we call this flattening algorithm. And then we recur, but now with true um, because, uh, because we flattened both types. Now here, if we have flattened types, then maybe uh, we're in a case like we just have a type variable equal something. That's called a canonical LHS. Um, and so there's a special function to handle canonical LHSs. Um, and so we check for that here. Now, um, we're sort of stuffed. If, if nothing else has worked, we have an error. Um, and so depending on the nature of our equality, if it's representational equality, maybe there's still some hope. So we make, um, it's, in, it's irreducible. We can't make any more progress, but maybe there's actually still hope. So um, we, we label it as not insoluble, it's other. Uh, but if we have nominal equality and we get here, then we have something like int against bool um, or something like, you know, int against maybe a. So we know that it's not going to match up. Um, okay, so somewhere in there was the bug that gave us that bad error message. Uh, and it turns out that it, it's, it's very sneakily hidden right here. The problem is, is that when we have our case in point was comparing star against star arrow star. So the star arrow star, that's a fun tie, so we'll try here. But the other one isn't a fun tie, so it won't go here. Star by itself is actually a Tycon app. It's not applied to anything, but it's considered a Tycon app, and this list would be empty. Um, but then the other one was a fun tie, so it doesn't fall in here. But both of them can be split up as app ties, and then we get that very silly error message. So what I want to do instead is instead of matching directly against Tycon app, I want to just say that this is tie 1. This is tie two, 
And then here I'm going to use a function. So we're going to get just of TC1 ties1. That's why I didn't erase that one. I have to remember the, the names. And we're going to call TC split tie cunt app maybe of tie1. And just TC2 ties2 is TC split tie cunt app maybe of tie2. Um, and then now that we've done that, I'll erase these. We certainly don't want them up here. And now split tie cunt app is clever enough to know to split arrows. And so we also want to get rid of, thank you, git gutter, for reminding me. Uh, we want to get rid of that comment down there. So that's the change that I've made. Let's recompile and see if that solves the problem. Um, OK, so first I need to recompile. Let me open up a new tab right in here. We go to a different spot and then make. And hopefully this will be quite quick. It should be. Not a lot of recompilation needed from this point. OK, good. So it's building, it's building, and it's done. And then now I'm going to rerun my test. And it works. Hooray. Um, I hope that's been interesting. Thanks very much for watching. Goodbye.